Hey, what's up guys? Back with another Mesh Wi-Fi review. This time we have the Rei RGR6 Mesh Wi-Fi system. I have two units right here. You can buy them individually or buy them as a pack. This is on the budget side. We have a speed rating of AX3200 and we have eight antennas inside. So this video is sponsored by Rei, just as a heads up. Granted, that doesn't change anything. I am gonna do my speed test, range test, like I normally do with my devices for both Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E, even though this is a Wi-Fi 6 mesh system. And we have a Cat5e Ethernet cable right here. We have a power plug. It is 100 to 240 volts. And let's see what the unit itself looks like. Alright, so we have four Ethernet ports, we have one for the WAN, three for LAN, so it is dedicated, they are gigabit ports, we have the power right here, we have a reset, and that might be a WPS thing, I'm assuming, and good to go. So we also have some instruction manuals, is that it, oh, right there. So yeah, so here we are, instruction manuals and stuff, good to go, download their app, set it up and everything, just like we normally do. So it's been almost two weeks since I've been running this as my main mesh system, and so far so good. So no drop, something abnormal. There were two things I noticed during setup, but real quick, I did all my speed test, range tests, I have all those numbers here. We will go over that momentarily from my Wi-Fi 6 device uh, testing. I use my iPhone 14 Pro Max. And Wi-Fi 6C devices, we have the Galaxy S23 Ultra and my Pixel 7 Pro. Now, if you guys are wondering why test with Wi-Fi 6C when this is a Wi-Fi 6 router, well, from previous testing, sometimes Wi-Fi 6C can actually go a lot faster even on a Wi-Fi 6 mesh system. So there are two things worth mentioning. Number one is during setup, when you're adding the secondary one, make sure it's in the same room. Uh, and then once it's set up, then you can unplug it and take it to the room that you plan on placing it in, which is typically around 30 to 50 feet away, depending on how many walls there are. Um, yeah. The second thing is, which was the bigger issue. However, it was immediately resolved after, after a firmware update, but upon initial setup of the main router, it asked me for a password that was eight to 16 characters long, which was odd. I had never seen that before for it to be limited to 16 characters. Usually the limit's a lot longer than that. So what I had to do is I basically set it up and I went inside the options and I updated the firmware. And once I updated the firmware, it then allowed me to input longer passwords uh, in that system. Now, if you guys are wondering, well, what's the point of that or why, why does that even matter? Well, one of the things you can do is when you're switching out your mesh system or your router, what you can do is you can use the same Wi-Fi name, which is your SSID and your password, and they are both case sensitive. So even the Wi-Fi name is case sensitive. And if you do that, all your devices will automatically connect to the, to the new system. So you won't have to go and reprogram everything. Now, if you don't have too many devices or you wanna change it, that's great. Uh, but if you're someone that doesn't wanna change all your passwords just because you changed your router, well, this is one way to avoid that. So when I saw that limitation, I was like, oh, that was odd. But it was resolved as soon as I did a firmware update. So good to go there. Now, internet speed test time. Now, no matter how fast any router or mesh system is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, assuming the router can even go that fast. Now, in my case, my internet speeds are five gigabits upload and download, and this router, as I mentioned earlier, only has gigabit ports on it. So, already this router itself is gonna cap my internet speeds to gigabit. So, do keep that in mind. If you have internet speeds over gigabit, you should look at a router that can support those faster speeds. But up to gigabit, this thing should be solid. Now, when I connected that, I did the speed test. I got around that 940 numbers, which is typical of what you see when you do internet speed test when they say gigabit. So that's what I saw with this thing. So good to go there. However, the Wi-Fi devices are a different story. As you guys can see, Wi-Fi 6 was in the 700s and Wi-Fi 6C did a little bit better, especially in the upload section. Now, to truly test this mesh system, I have to get rid of the public speed test server and my ISP and basically make my computer into the local speed test server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router 
to computer, which is acting as the server. And then for the wired and wireless backhaul testing, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which then jumps to the primary one, which then goes to the server. And so that way I get the true numbers. Now, if you guys are interested to know about how this works, I've done a separate video on this where I go into great detail explaining all this stuff. So I'll link it down below if you guys are interested. Okay, now as you guys can see, both Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E did a lot better for the local speed test, especially the Wi-Fi 6 upload speed. In fact, it did a little bit better uh, overall compared to Wi-Fi 6E, which, which surprised me a bit. For the wired backhaul, um, similar numbers to the previous I mean not quite there was a bit of a difference there but it's kind of within the ballpark of yeah it, it's both fast now we get to the wireless backhaul now wireless backhaul with dual band systems I don't really expect much because if you're if you're setting up a wireless backhaul system and you care a lot about the secondary speeds then I typically recommend getting a tri-band system or even a quad-band system, but granted there aren't too many quad-band systems out there, but typically a tri-band systems perform a lot better in the wireless backhaul scene. But this was okay. I mean, you know, nothing amazing, but it, it did okay, basically. Now jumping into range test. So this thing actually did very well considering the price of this thing. So it started out strong inside my place at 20 feet, very good numbers, not too much of a drop. At 50 feet, I'm outside still getting solid numbers. In fact, I was getting solid numbers up until about like 140 to even 180 feet was actually pretty impressive. And it took me all the way up to 300 feet. Uh, considering the price of this thing, it actually got really good range. For setup and configuration, you get the Ray app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. You follow the instructions, set it up. Again, I told you guys about the two things about the secondary one being in the same room. In fact, being very close to the first one during initial setup. And the second thing is your password being limited between eight to 16 characters, assuming you have an older firmware. The current firmware does support more than that. So aside from those two things, it was good to go. And I have a list here. So you do get parental controls. They are basic parental controls where it kind of limits the devices based on the time. You can also block devices um, explicitly. Uh, you can make a separate Internet of Things IoT for the 2.4 gigahertz band, which is cool that you can make a separate SSID for that. Uh, it has a game turbo mode, so I, I guess it can optimize gaming. Uh, you could turn off the LEDs, you can control the Wi-Fi signal strength, you could put it on max, and then, or you could put it on min. In fact, I think there was three settings that supports OpenVPN. And one thing that I noticed about this is typically when you're putting your Wi-Fi password, uh, you're setting up your Wi-Fi password or a guest network's password, um, typically you get the encryption and it says like, oh, WPA or WPA2. And then if it's Wi-Fi 6E on the six gigahertz band, it's going to be WPA3, for instance. Uh, and then you have the older styles too, WEP and stuff. But with this one, it basically just says open and encrypted. So it's pretty much kind of picking that for you. So in a way it's simplified, but I don't actually know what they're, I think it's WPA2 if I had to guess, but I don't know because it just says encrypted. But uh, I think they're going for the simplified approach, but something just worth uh, mentioning. So some people might like that, some people might not, uh, but there we go. Now, is it worth getting these? Why or why not? Well, it depends on your situation. So I would say this would be a good fit for anyone with internet speeds of up to gigabit that's planning on using wired backhaul because for the price, you got some pretty good speeds, got some pretty good range. I like the fact that it has four ports, which not most mesh systems actually don't have four ports. I mean, some of the more expensive ones do, uh, but most mesh systems that I test have two or three ports. So that's kind of a nice added feature. You do also get some basic parental controls and some other basic features. So I'd say for the price, it's a pretty good mesh system, but let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button. I have a whole lot more router and mesh reviews coming up, comparisons, setup guides, and everything. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.